Gary, I don't want to be a nag, but you go out that door and I've no idea when you'll be back. Look, I'll try and pop back tonight, I promise. We're married now. You've got responsibilities. <sighs> Phoebe, being a spy isn't a nine-to-five job, you know. I can hardly turn to M halfway through a mission and say, I'm sorry, sir, it's five o'clock. I've got to go home for my tea now. Yeah, I bet when you do get hungry, that Miss Moneypenny's always got something hot for you. <laughs> there is nothing between me and Moneypenny. OK, I admit she has got a bit of a thing for me. Well, there's this trick I do, you know, I throw my hat onto a hook and she laughs. <laughs> she understands I'm strictly out of bounds. I know your work takes up a lot of your time, but I'm worried about all the things that need doing round here. It sounds like what? Like what? I'm eight months pregnant. The baby could arrive at any moment. The nursery isn't decorated or furnished. Left to you, our baby would end up sleeping in a drawer. I slept in a drawer till I was five. <laughs> Real nice. My dad used to leave it open. <laughs> Look, I don't want to do anything to the nursery until the baby's born and everything's OK. I don't want to tempt fate. What do you mean? The doctor says everything's fine. Has he said something different to you? No, no, of course not. You're lying. What's he said? Nothing, I swear. Look, you're right. Everything's going to be fine. I'm just being silly. So when will you decorate the nursery, then? Well, we can hire someone. Pay someone to do our decorating? You've got some airs and graces. Oh, I can afford it. Do you know any handymen? Hmm. <laughs> the ones I knew have been called up. Yeah. God, there must be somebody keen to earn a few bob on the side. <laughs> Ask me. Hmm? Of course. Do you know anyone, Reg? <laughs> no, I mean, ask me to decorate the nursery for you. Oh, um, well, thanks, Reg, but we want it done a certain way. What way is that, then? Properly. <laughs> Don't be so rude. Reg is a dab hand with a brush. He did a lovely job on Margie's scullery. He transformed it. Into what? Nothing. It's still a scullery. I only had a bucket of distemper. <laughs> oh, OK, if you're happy. Now, what about the furniture? Oh, yeah, what do we need? Uh, crib, Moses basket. Um, why don't you just make a list and I'll pick up everything in the same place I've got the pram? Can't I come with you to... Where was it you said you went mother care? <laughs> um, well, no. No, it, it's part of the American embassy, you see. We have to go through a lot of red tape. By the time you got your security clearance, the baby would be on solids. This is my baby as well, Gary. I, I want to help choose all of his little things. It's part of the fun for a woman. OK, OK, we'll go to the shops. It's not a new stick of furniture in the whole of Hackney. No, I mean, we'll go up west. Harrods. You get anything if you've got the money. You've got Harrods sort of money, have you? Yeah, no problem. So, Reg, how much am I going to pay you for doing this decorating? Ten be OK? I wouldn't take ten bob off you, son. No, I meant ten quid, Reg. Ten quid? It's more than I make in a month. <laughs> how many times do I have to tell you money isn't a problem? You've got no money, have you? <laughs> See, at the moment, most alternative therapies are just a chaotic jumble of cottage industries going on in people's front rooms or above kebab shops. Eventually, what I'd like to do is put them all under one roof. A holistic health centre. Give the whole thing some sort of credibility. You're so right. Most people still see alternative therapy as something that's practised by weirdos and hippies. Well, and nutters. Don't forget nutters. <laughs> Sweet nuts. Good trip. Uh, yeah. Hi, Kate. Hello, Gary. How's the career going? Oh, you know, a constant round of war zones, interviews with major politicians, big movie premieres. Oh, sounds fun. Yeah, those are just some of the jobs I might be doing if I wasn't stuck on the Salford Evening Argus. <laughs> <laughs> so, has Yvonne been telling you all about her plans for comprehensive health cover for the lentil-eating people of the world? You'll have noticed Gary is not an enthusiast. There's more things in heaven and earth than all that, Gary. Some of the things I've read on the internet... You're wasting your time, Kate. Closed mind. No, I can believe that something like acupuncture can have some merit. But just because I can't entertain the idea that sitting under a plastic pyramid can cure your piles doesn't mean I've got a closed mind. That means that you are gullible. Excuse me, plastic pyramids and piles? You're making this up. Oh, OK. What about that guy who came around the other week with his shiny stones? Energy crystals. They give out the positive and take away the negative. You get naked and place them on various parts of your body. I had a few bedding plants and, hey, you're a rockery. <laughs> I think we should stop this conversation now before I smack you in the gob. Oh, <laughs> very new age. Oh, three guesses. What? Who is it? Wrong. How long were you away? A day and a half? Five times he's popped round already. He's got the raging hots for Kate. Oh. He keeps asking me back to his pad. Oh, he doesn't say pad. 
Well, he watches a lot of cable. It's all those shows from the 70s. <laughs> Look, Kate, try and cut Ron some slack. He's going through a really bad divorce at the moment. He's not himself. Sorry. I just find him boring. I like a man who can make me laugh, not make me sleep. Hi, all. I was just sitting alone in my... Flat. Pad, Gary, pad. <laughs> about to sample this saucy little vintage when I thought, hey, why drink alone when I can share it with friends? Good job I did. Gary's back. Looks like we've got ourselves a foursome. <laughs> yeah, well, let's just start with the wine, shall we? Man? <laughs> Good idea, Gaz. Get a bit of a party atmos going. I'll just go and get some glasses, shall I? Right, we're off down the wine bar. What? Have a word with him, Gary. Make him understand that Kate is not interested. Well, you can't just go. Yes, we can. Come on, Kate. Ron. No I... need to explain. The sound of crumpets stampeding towards the exit shortly after <laughs> yours truly enters a room has become something of a familiar sound of late. Don't be so hard on yourself. Hard on myself. It's life turning the thumbscrews. Well, it's really good to see you, mate. Thanks. I need some more wartime currency. <laughs> you had me fooled there, Gaz. I thought you were referring to me, the person, as opposed to me, the 1940s cash point. <laughs> sorry, mate. It's just that, well, I'm, I'm right out. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, too. I can't help you. Well, don't be like that. My life is meaningless. I just don't want to think about work. I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but I've lost the will to print. <laughs> no, Ron, you're being irrational. Your life is not meaningless. I've lost my wife, my home, half the value of my business. I finally meet Kate, a bird I really, really fancy, and all she sees is a boring git. <laughs> well, that is nonsense. She was just saying how much you make her laugh. I'm sure I do. I'd just like to be in the same room when she does it. <laughs> Kate is very interested. They just had to go up. You are despicable. You're just lying to me, so I will go and print your money. Well, I wouldn't do it now if you're the last time traveller in the cookie jar. <laughs> do you honestly think I would do that? So she fancies me, does she? Desperate for my bod, is she? I'm sure of it. All right, I'll do you a deal. I'll ask Kate on a date. If she says yes, I'll print your money for you. But if I make a prat of myself, you'll have to consult Yellow Pages for a new forger. Do I look worried? <laughs> All right, can I have a quick pint of... Shut your eyes. No. Shut your eyes and hold out your hands. I've got a surprise for you. <laughs> it's wallpaper. So it is. Cool. I thought you'd be pleased. <laughs> that stuff's harder to come by than an alarm clock. In again, alarm clock's easier to get hold of than a hot water bottle. Mind you, hot water Rich. bottle. Rich. <laughs> get you to it. Cost a pretty penny, but you said yesterday money was no object. It's like the stuff my grandma used to have. She was all to go, wasn't she? Don't you think it's OK? OK is such a strong word, isn't it? Oh, it's a nice chocolate brown paint to go with it. Oh, that should make all the difference. <laughs> Where did you get all this stuff? Charlie Harris, local spiv. Black market? Reg is a policeman. So is Charlie Harris. <laughs> Reg has laid out a fair few bob for this lot. You'll have to reimburse him. Oh, um, well, I won't be able to do that right away. I'm temporarily short of cash, you see. Well, the pay can be a bit erratic in the Secret Service, you know, because they tend to leave it hidden in hollow trees, and sometimes it takes a long time to find the right tree. So... <laughs> Phoebe, I'm joking. Well, you should have made sure you had it before you went on about Harrods and money being no object. You don't have to impress me, you know. I wasn't doing it to impress you. I know how you like to put on a bit of swank. But I married you because I love you, not because of your money. No, I can afford it. I'll have all the money I need soon. Well, you'd better tell Reg you'll have to wait. He used the money he'd saved for Margie's birthday present. Oh, he didn't? He did. Reg! Um, Reg, I'm, I'm sorry. I've got a bit of a cash problem. It, it's only temporary, but it means I won't be able to reimburse you for the paper and paint straight away. Oh, I see. 
Well, when's Margie's birthday? Next week. Oh, well, it should be okay by then. Well, not to worry, son. Worst comes to the worst, I can always wrap up a tin of paint. Mind you, she won't be happy. She wanted a handbag. <laughs> well, Phoebe, don't look at me like that. I was... Ron will be popping round in a while. Oh. Oh, come on, Kate. I don't think you're giving him a fair chance. Now, I know Yvonne's got a downer on him, but she only got Stella's side of the divorce, so her view's bound to be jaundiced. I mean it. He is a kind, gentle, funny man. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, he said something to me yesterday. Had me in stitches. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> you had to be there. It was very witty and of the moment, you know, wouldn't stand a repeat. <laughs> oh, talk of the devil. <laughs> come on, mate, come on in. <laughs> we were just talking about you. Only good things, I hope. <laughs> I'm just going to make myself a coffee. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. I've been preparing the ground for you. She is definitely keen. You play your cards right, it's going to be a breeze. I certainly hope so. Ron, have you been drinking? Just a little scotch courage. All right, give me the three golden rules. One, be interesting. Two, don't mention my pad. Three, don't put my hand up a blouse unless you specifically ask me to. <laughs> all right, well, I've done all I can. You're on your own. Um, Kate, I'm off now. What do you mean you're off? Well, I, I've got to go to the shop. But Yvonne won't be back for a couple of hours. Oh, that's all right. Ron will entertain you. Bye. Alone at last. Look, Ron... You know, we should have a lot to talk about, you and I. Really? Oh, yes. Both our professions being dependent on the printed word. Well, I don't really get involved in the mechanics. I just tap my stories into the computer. Oh, yes. The ubiquitous computer. You know, personally, I feel that the demise of the old hot metal press was a crying shame. It had a romance all of its own. <laughs> Did it? Oh, yes. In fact, the whole history of the printed word is a fascinating one. From the introduction by the Chinese of the single wooden block in the 6th century to their invention of movable type in the 11th. Of course, it took another three centuries for it to reach Europe. <laughs> that was when John Gutenberg... I'm going on a bit, aren't I? I'm just going to finish making that coffee. <laughs> <laughs> for God's sake, we Croft, you must know something interesting. Hey, Kate, did you know Gary was a time traveller? Hello, Gary. Ron's gone, is he? Yep. Oh, thanks. So, you're a time traveller then. <laughs> You've got a time portal in the back of your shop, which you go through and have adventures in wartime London. <laughs> Ron told Kate everything. <laughs> leaving me with him. I think it was worth it just to hear him tell that tale. <laughs> Where did he get it from? Oh, who knows? He's got to be on something. God knows what it is, but the street value must be incredible. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Excuse me, I need the toilet. <laughs> Why did you do it? Kate is a journalist. Not only that, she is a journalist who believes in crop circles. <laughs> 
anyone who thinks that an alien civilization would cross the vastness of space just to make meaningless patterns in arable crop might just have believed you enough to set some sort of trap for me. Rob, I could have been a headline in the Daily Sport along with Budgie Eats None. <laughs> what possessed you? I was desperate. You were drunk. I was losing her. Her eyes were glazing over. Bits of her were going rigid with boredom. You know, you're just exaggerating. I know the signs. I've been boring women since I was 16. Oh, well, congratulations. Because now she just doesn't think you're boring. She thinks you're mad as well. What was the logic involved? Why did you think that telling her about me would help you? Did you think you'd become interesting by association? It worked for Jimmy Olsen. He was just another newspaper photographer until he became Superman's pal. I'll bet if you know the man in tights, you don't sleep alone. <laughs> Rob, I think we need to take a little dip in Lake Real. All right, then five bellies. Who'd take any notice of him if it wasn't for Gaza? And that's your role model, is it? An overweight, beer-swilling <coughs> bot? <laughs> he is your role model, isn't he? Well, you know what really hurts? You nearly blew my whole world apart. You're not even sorry. Why should I be? It's all your fault. And how do you make that out? If you hadn't lied to me and told me she fancied me, I wouldn't have been there making a prat of myself in the first place. I didn't lie. I just took a positive angle. No, I come to think of it, quite a lot could be your fault. Before I met you, I had a thriving business, a happy marriage. It's all gone now. Maybe if I hadn't spent so long concentrating on your oh so complicated life, I wouldn't have neglected my own. Oh, don't be ridiculous. No, no, it's true. All this time I've been blaming myself, thinking I was some sort of tosser. When all along, you were the tosser. Yeah, I like that. Ron, this is neither fair nor healthy. Look, if your life is going to move on, you've got to accept And what the... would you know, tosser? <laughs> all right. All right, if it makes you feel better, I'm the tosser. No, I think it would be best all round if you just gave me my white fivers and I leave. Oh, I'll speak to you again no, when you're sober. No, 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 no. I said you could have the money if I got a date with Kate. No, Ron, I need it. I'm going back there tonight. I must have some cash. So get a job. <laughs> Who says I'm not funny? <laughs> Ron, mate, you're off your face. You're not making any sense. Oh, yes, I am. No Kate, no date, no dosh. I haven't left my pasting brush down here, have I? Reg, is there actually any paint on the walls? Mm, I suppose it did splash a bit. Between you and me and the gatepost, I reckon Charlie Harris has walked at it down. Has he now? I think I'll do the same to his next pint of mild. How's it going up there? Job speeded up considerably now the flour and wallpaper paste mix-up's been resolved. Thanks for pointing it out. I'm really sorry you've been left out of pocket. I'll give it to you myself, only I haven't got it to spare. Don't worry about it. Gary will come up trumps. He always does. Yeah. I was a bit hard on him, wasn't I? If I turn out to be a nag like my dad, you'd let me know, won't you? Don't if anyone could be a nag like your dad was. True. Shocker he was. On and on he'd go. Then on and on again for hours on end. Really got on my nerves, he did. OK, Reg, it is my dad we're talking about. Sorry. Well, I'd better get on. Standing here chin-wagging won't get more paste brush found. Oh. Reg! <laughs> it was funny when we confronted Gary. It was hilarious. No, I mean funny odd. How did he look to you? Oh, he looked shocked. He was, wasn't he? Why? Someone accused me of being a time traveller. Well, it's as bizarre as someone telling you... Andrew Lloyd Webber's a sex god. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Gary should have looked bemused, but instead he looked caught out. Well, what are you trying to say? You don't think he really could be, do you? Are you sure you've only had one glass? Think about it for a minute. <laughs> It'll explain an awful lot. His constant trips away... To collector's fairs. His endless supply of pristine wartime artefacts. Which he gets from collector's fairs. No, no, it's too simple. A good journalist always digs deeper. I've got a feeling about this. There was a similar case in the 40 and times. Uh, hang on a minute. Are you seriously trying to suggest that my husband is a time traveller? No. I'm glad to hear it. What if he was, though? Kate! <laughs> we could find out for sure. He said he was going away again tonight, didn't he? So? So let's get his spare keys, hide in the shop and see if he turns up. No way. Gary would laugh for a month if he found out. But if he isn't a time traveller, he won't have to go back to the shop and he won't find out, will he? Oh, come on. It'll be a giggle. <laughs> 
This is mad. How did I let you talk me into this? Give it time. You never know. We should brought the wine. Lush. <laughs> It's all padlocked. He didn't have the time. Well, he's got to be there somewhere. It's true, Yvonne. Your husband is a time traveller. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we give it a go? No way! <laughs> must be mad. Agent Mulder! <laughs> I told you you were gullible, didn't I? Yeah, all right, Gary. Please don't go on. Thank you very much. So, you actually thought I was a time traveller? How did you know we were in the shop? I saw your car parked outside. <laughs> it's fairly easy to spot. It's the only Fiesta I know with an I've been kidnapped by alien sticker in the back. Hang on a minute. This whole thing wasn't a setup, was it? Yeah. Yeah, it was. I just popped back on the off chance that you'd go for it. That means I'd be made a fool of by Ron Wheatcroft. <laughs> he was brilliant, wasn't he? What an actor. He had you hook, ley line and sinker. He played that drunken, boring idiot part to a T, just so as you wouldn't see him baiting the hook. I told you, Kate, you've misjudged that man. He's a laugh, all right. He certainly had me fooled. Well, how about a little date with him? Yeah, one date won't do any harm. Can I use your phone? Hmm. <laughs> Kate, no, no, no. Come along, Yvonne. I think we should let Kate sort out her own love life, don't you? After all, you wouldn't want this story repeated to, say, everyone we know, would you? <laughs> Sorted. <laughs> well, here we are, then, as promised. Who'd have thought an ordinary common or garden little bloke like me would get to shop in Arrods? <laughs> it's only a shop. Are you sure we're allowed in here? It's only a shop. Thank you so much, Your Ladyship. We're delighted to have been of service to you. I'm not comfortable. Even a sales staff sound like royalty. Yeah, did you see when we come through that food hall? They are coconuts. I'm torn now. My Margie's got a soft spot for a coconut. I don't know whether to get her one of them instead of a handbag. Oh, a handbag, I think, Reg. Looks less conspicuous with evening wear. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Go on, get a boat. Oh, no, I, I can't take any more off this hand. It's a thank you for doing the nursery. You did a great job. Thanks. A handbag and a coconut. Oh, it's going to be a birthday to remember this one. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll meet you back here then, shall I? OK, fine. Well, go on then. Have a look round. Are you sure that's all right? <sighs> I know. It's only a shop. He's a lovely, aren't they? Hmm. Very cute. Oh, look at those cots. Bleeding hell, you could buy a car for that. <laughs> I wonder. Is Madam quite sure she has sufficient wherewithal for this particular item? Beg pardon? It's very expensive. May I suggest that Madam will be more at home with the seconds in our remainders department? I want to go. Oh, I don't think there are any on this floor. No, I, mean, I want to go home. Why? I don't belong here. Who's upset you? All right, just wait here. Shh. 
Excuse me, Gav, can I have a word in your shell like? <laughs> you see, me and the travelling strife, we've come up west on the chariot, get a few bits and pieces for our new saucepan lid, right? But if you continue to give my ball and chain grief, we're going to have to get on our plates of meat and take our business up the frog and toad. Well, no skin off my what's it? Current buns out, it's a lovely day for a ball of chalk. Uh, I'm afraid I don't quite follow you. Then let me use a language I'm sure you will understand. I am prepared to spend obscene amounts of this, <laughs> but only if my good lady is fawned over, groveled at, and generally made to feel like the lady she is. <laughs> Petrol coupons. Am I making myself clear now? Perfectly, sir. <laughs> Madam, allow me to apologise for the earlier misunderstanding. Please be assured I am at your disposal just as long as you need me. <laughs> now, if Madam will be so kind as to tell me what she's looking for, I will have the items brought over immediately for your perusal. Eat your heart out, Richard Gear. <laughs> Nice touch. Meat and sugar coupons. This will all have to stop when Mr. Al Fayed takes over, you know. <laughs> you see my dinner jacket? I'm going somewhere special. Yeah, 21st birthday party. Whose? Winston Churchill's. <laughs> <laughs> How long are you going to keep this up? Ooh, ages, I think. No, really, where are you going today? I've got a collector's fair in Mexborough. Mm. Or maybe not. Well, if you're staying overnight, give me a ring. Yeah, of course I will. If I can find a phone box in the blackout. <laughs> you know, I'd get a mobile, but they weren't around in the 40s, and half a century's a long time to wait for a dialing tone, isn't it? <laughs> Why don't you get a mobile? Huh? Bring you whenever I wanted, then. I don't like them. No, they, they reckon they give up radiation. You know, it's very bad for your head. Rubbish! I, I've seen the research. Where? In newspapers. Look, why are we having this conversation? Well, you started it. Anyway, I haven't got time. I've got to go. Oh, right. Bye. Bye. See what happens when you start getting cocky? <laughs> Talk about you and I. Really? Oh, yes. Both our professions being dependent on the printed word. Well, I don't really get involved in the mechanics. I just tap my stories into the computer. Oh, yes. The ubiquitous computer. <laughs> you know, personally, I feel that the demise of the old hot metal press was a crying shame. It had a romance all of its own. <laughs> Did it? Oh, yes. In fact, the whole history of the printed word is a fascinating one. From the introduction by the Chinese of the single wooden block in the 6th century to their invention of movable type in the 11th. Of course, it took another three centuries for it to reach Europe. That was when John Gutenberg... I'm going on a bit, aren't I? I'm just going to finish making that coffee. <laughs> For God's sake, Weecroft, you must know something interesting. Hey, Kate, did you know Gary was a time traveller? <laughs> Hi. Hello, Gary. Hello, Gary. Ron's gone, is he? Yep. Oh. So? Easy to spot. It's the only Fiesta I know with an I've been kidnapped by aliens sticker in the back. Hang on a minute. This 
whole thing wasn't a setup, was it? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Dad just popped back on the off chance that you'd go for it. That means I'd be made a fool of by Ron Wheatcroft. <laughs> he was brilliant, wasn't he? What an actor. He had you hook, ley line and sinker. He played that drunken, boring idiot part to a T, just so as you wouldn't see him baiting the hook. I told you, Kate, you've misjudged that man. He's a laugh, all right. He certainly had me fooled. Well, how about a little date with him? Yeah, one date won't do any harm. Can I use your phone? Mm. <laughs> Kate, no, you... no, no, come along, Yvonne. I think we should let Kate sort out her own love life, don't you? After all, you wouldn't want this story repeated to, say, everyone we know, would you? <laughs> Sorted. <laughs> Well, here we are then, as promised. Who'd have thought an ordinary common or garden little bloke like me would get the shop in Arrods? <laughs> it's only a shop. Are you sure we're allowed in here? It's only a shop. Thank you so much, Your Ladyship. We're delighted to have been of service to you. I'm not comfortable. Hey, Kate! Did you know Gary was a time traveller? <laughs> Hello, Gary. Hello, Gary. Ron's gone, is he? Yep. Oh, thanks. So, you're a time traveller, then. <laughs> You've got a time portal in the back of your shop, which you go through and have adventures in wartime London. <laughs> Ron told Kate everything. <laughs> leaving me with him. Oh, I think it was worth it just to hear him tell that tale. <laughs> Where did he get it from? Oh, who knows? He's got to be on something. God knows what it is, but the street value must be incredible. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Excuse me, I need the toilet. <laughs> Why did you do it? Kate is a journalist. Not only that, she is a journalist who believes in crop circles. <laughs> Anyone who thinks that an alien civilization would cross the vastness of space just to make meaningless patterns in arable crop might just have believed you enough to set some sort of trap for me. As long as you need me. <laughs> now, if Madam will be so kind as to tell me what she's looking for, I will have the items brought over immediately for your perusal. Eat your heart out, Richard Gear. <laughs> Nice touch. Meat and sugar coupons. This will all have to stop when Mr. Al Fayed takes over, you know. <laughs> you see my dinner jacket? Are you going somewhere special? Yeah, 21st birthday party. Whose? Winston Churchill's. <laughs> <laughs> How long are you going to keep this up? Ooh, ages, I think. No, really, where are you going today? I've got a collector's fair in Mexborough. <gasps> or maybe not. Well, if you're staying overnight, give me a ring. Yeah, of course I will. If I can find a phone box in the blackout. <laughs> you know, I'd get a mobile, but they weren't around in the 40s, and half a century's a long time to wait for a dialing tone, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you get a mobile? Huh? Bring you whenever I wanted, then. I don't like them. No, they, they reckon they give up radiation. You know, it's very bad for your head. Rubbish! I, I've seen the research. Where? Reg, I'm, I'm sorry. I've got a bit of a cash problem. It, it's only temporary, but it means I won't be able to reimburse you for the paper and paint straight away. Oh, I see. Well, when's Margie's birthday? Next week. Oh, well, I should be okay by then. Well, not to worry, son. Worst comes to the worst, I can always wrap up a tin of paint. Mind you, she won't be happy. She wanted a handbag. <laughs> well, Phoebe, don't look at me like that. I was... Ron will be popping round in a while. Oh. Oh, come on, Kate. I don't think you're giving him a fair chance. 
Now, I know Yvonne's got a downer on him, but she only got Stella's side of the divorce, so her view's bound to be jaundiced. I mean it. He is a kind, gentle, funny man. <laughs> Honestly, he said something to me yesterday. Had me in stitches. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> you had to be there. It was very witty and of the moment, you know, wouldn't stand a repeat. <laughs> oh, talk of the devil. <laughs> About you? Only good things, I hope. <laughs> I'm just going to make myself a coffee. <laughs> How did you do it? Tate is a journalist. Not only that, she is a journalist who believes in crop circles. <laughs> Anyone who thinks that an alien civilization would cross the vastness of space just to make meaningless patterns in arable crop might just have believed you enough to set some sort of trap for me. Rob, I could have been a headline in the Daily Sport along with Budgie Eats None. <laughs> what possessed you? I was desperate. You were drunk. I was losing her. Her eyes were glazing over. Bits of her were going rigid with boredom. You know, you're just exaggerating. I know the signs. I've been boring women since I was 16. <laughs> oh, well, congratulations. Because now she just doesn't think you're boring. She thinks you're mad as well. What was the logic involved? Why did you think that telling her about me would help you? Did you think you'd become interesting by association? It worked for Jimmy Olsen. He was just another newspaper photographer until he became Superman's pal. I'll bet if you know the man in tights, you don't sleep alone. <laughs> Ron, I think we need to take a little dip in Lake Real. All right, then five bellies. Who'd take any notice of him if it wasn't for Gaza? And that's your role model, is it? An overweight, beer-swilling <coughs> bot? <laughs> He is your role model, isn't he? Well, you know what really hurts? You nearly blew my whole world apart. You're not even sorry. Why should I be? It's all your fault. And how do you make that out? If you hadn't lied to me and told me she fancied me, I wouldn't have been there making... If you hadn't lied to me and told me she fancied me, I wouldn't have been there making a prat of myself in the first place. I didn't lie. I just took a positive angle. No, I come to think of it, quite a lot could be your fault. Before I met you, I had a thriving business, a happy marriage. It's all gone now. Maybe if I hadn't spent so long concentrating on your oh so complicated life, I wouldn't have neglected my own. Oh, don't be ridiculous. No, no, it's true. All this time, I've been blaming myself, thinking I was some sort of tosser. When all along, you were the tosser. Yeah, I like that. Ron, this is neither fair nor healthy. Look, if your life is going to move on, you've got to accept... And what would you know? Tosser. <laughs> All right. All right. If it makes you feel better, I'm the tosser. No, I think it would be best all round if you just gave me my white fivers and I leave. Oh, I'll speak to you again no, when you're sober. No, 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 no. I said you could have the money if I got a date with Kate. No, Ron, I need it. I'm going back there tonight. I must have some cash. So get a job. <laughs> Who says I'm not funny? <laughs> Ron, mate, you're off your face. You're not making any sense. Oh, yes, I am. No Kate, no date, no dosh. Cool. <laughs> I haven't got my pasting brush down here, have I? Red, is there actually any paint on the walls? <laughs> I suppose it did splash a bit. In a fair chance. Now, I know Yvonne's got a downer on him, but she only got Stella's side of the divorce, so her view's bound to be jaundiced. I mean it. He is a kind, gentle, funny man. <laughs> Honestly, he said something to me yesterday. Had me in stitches. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> you had to be there. It, it was very witty and of the moment, you know, wouldn't stand a repeat. <laughs> oh! Talk of the devil. <laughs> oh, mate, come on in. <laughs> we were just talking about you. Only good things, I hope. <laughs> I'm just going to make myself a coffee. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. I've been preparing the ground for you. She is definitely keen. You play your cards right, it's going to be a breeze. I certainly hope so. Ron, have you been drinking? Just a little scotch courage. 
All right, give me the three golden rules. One, be interesting. Two, don't mention my pad. Three, don't put my hand up a blouse unless you specifically ask me to. <laughs> all right, well, I've done all I can. You're on your own. Um, Kate, I'm off now. What do you mean you're off? Well, I, I've got to go to the shop. But Yvonne won't be back for a couple of hours. 